All right, so what's left to do on this? I would like the throttle tied to a linear potentiometer, and I would like that to control pulse width modulation, and all I really have are some Arduino nanos. And I have one of these to convert 12 volts into five. It's a DC to DC converter. And of course I have these batteries. They're in series to 72 volts. However, what I can do is just pull from a single battery and get my 12 volts. I was having a heck of a time mapping this, and so I finally took the unit off and found out that uh, it was very heavily corroded. So I ended up modifying it really quickly to repin a couple of these uh, so that they would make contact with the connectors. Well, it was a big pain in the butt. However, everything is mounted. I actually drilled a couple holes through here and used some thermal paste to uh, get the solid state relay use the chassis as a heat sink, so that's good. I used some plastic pipe hanger and some sheet metal screws to affix the wiring to the vehicle frame itself. If you're wondering why I didn't route this through the body, it's because it would have been kind of a pain and I actually wanted it to be pretty accessible and protected from anything underneath. So I thought this was pretty sad. Look how dirty the power is coming out of that. can't even keep the solid state relay turned on. It's actually on off, on off, on off fast enough that it's actually visibly shaking the motor. I tried a few different capacitors and uh, none of them really fix how bad the supply is. So, but I'm thinking the Arduino Nano regulator itself will probably clean it up sufficiently. If not, I may have to give it its own dedicated supply without all the dirt. It's also possible that this motor may be causing some kind of inductive effects with the uh, batteries that are in series, so maybe it's actually screwing this up. So I'm bypassing any pulse width modulation for the moment, and uh, that's mostly for testing. This thing is moving fast enough now that it's banging against something. I have to look into that more. And uh, I found that these pipe hangers will hold these batteries pretty well along where the strap would normally go. But I did add these two lines here for charging. And uh, I actually tied that into the existing line using a piece of copper pipe that I pinched down using some pliers. Of course, I used some OxGuard to coat the aluminum when mixing aluminum and copper to help prevent degradation with galvanic effects. Lastly, I went ahead and purchased this big charger, which can charge 72 volts at 10 amps which is essentially what I need to charge all of these six batteries at once. Uh, it seems to do fine, but I don't think it automatically shuts off, which is a little bit disappointing. So I may have to add something to automatically stop the charging at some point. I guess in theory it would just trickle charge, maybe? I don't know. I'm not sure how smart it is, but it was only around, I think, $165. I'll put a link in the description where you can pick up one of those. What's nice about it is, it actually does 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72 volts. So you can have uh, up to six batteries in series and charge them. So I was thinking about how I could build something like this charger just in case anybody was interested in that sort of thing. And I think the easiest way to do it would probably be to use a microwave transformer and then to rewind the secondary so that you would be at your, you know, something like, 85 volts, somewhere around there for topping off six batteries in series that are 12 volts each. And I, I think that would do the trick. Then the only thing you'd need is an amp meter and a rectifier to convert that from AC to DC. Maybe a capacitor for smoothing it out, but I doubt that's really required. I, I would be surprised if this had much going on. I ended up using a tie down to affix these batteries and it seems very secure. So it was just the simplest way to deal with it. Now I'm going to actually try to drive this thing. I also haven't finished the pulse width modulation, so my throttle doesn't do anything.
Well, that seemed to go okay, but I have to say that the uh, motor is banging around a lot. So, <laughs> hey, at least I can sweep under here now. I did think about maybe putting some casters right here, pushing into it, something like that, just to keep it from banging, but I suppose that it makes more sense to bite the bullet and just grind this down. So, I ended up grinding that off, and uh, I was surprised to see how thick this is. So clearly it was, you know, a lot of shear strength on that axle. You can see here what I ended up doing. I just spaced this with a couple of large nuts. Uh, I was going to stick some washers in, but didn't really have any space to stick them in with the uh, bolt that I found to fit this shaft. Just a side note, it's probably not obvious, but this bag is around these batteries in case they leak some acid so it doesn't hit that electric motor. So this is much, much quieter, and yeah, it's about right for an electric motor probably, considering it's still a mechanical assembly. The uh, solid state relay is very cool, so I don't think this is actually putting that much strain on the system. It's probably a stupid idea, but <laughs> I kind of really want to take this outside, even though it is raining a little bit. So unfortunately, what you just saw is uh, it's fastest speed, but I will say the batteries really aren't charged all the way, so that might give it a bit more of a boost after a full charge. The issue is mostly voltage. The uh, motor itself is designed for about 110, 115, something like that. Another thing I noticed is that the uh, motor casing is very cool, but the shaft itself is very hot, or I should say very warm at this point, but probably too hot to touch once it gets going for a while. So I think a lot of that probably needs some TLC. I should lubricate it. I haven't checked if there are bearings, but I should probably see if I can pack any bearings or anything. The other thing is that uh, I don't think much of the transmission has had any care for a while either, so I should probably try <laughs> maybe adding some transmission fluid perhaps, or at the very least lubricating some of the pulleys that are in the assembly underneath. All of those things should increase the efficiency and when it comes to electric vehicles, high efficiency is kind of the thing to aim for. Previously when I had been driving it around it was down to about 68 volts, so obviously these batteries are not in great shape. I already knew that going into this project. That's why there are six of them put in series, because I knew that they were kind of in bad shape. Because I'm also charging in series, there's probably going to be a few weak links and I'm not entirely sure how well things will play out overall. It's also possible that I could replace that lawnmower motor with some other electric motor, maybe something that has higher RPMs at lower voltage due to the windings. Longer term, I may even consider doing something silly like making a robot drive this around. You know, just kind of playing with it since it is such an economical thing to play with and it's not that serious if it gets out of hand, you know. If this was to, for example, run into a building, all it would do is slip on the pulley for a while, probably until the rubber burned away or the battery ran dead or the pulley actually popped the belt off of it, something along those lines. So this isn't nearly as dangerous as other clutch systems, which can go haywire if a computer is the one in charge of driving. If you enjoyed this video or this series of videos, please like and subscribe and I will do an update video in the future, I'm sure, when I tweak things a little bit further.